Hi everyone, and welcome to our July webinar. We're going to dive into a very timely subject this month, the why and the how behind effective crop scouting. Our expert on this topic, and I'll be introducing him here shortly, has a favorite quote summing up this theme. The best thing you can put on your crop is your shadow. This is a telling quote because it drives home the value of getting boots on the ground so farmers and their advisors can see firsthand what's going on. Whether you're looking for pests or disease pressure once your crop is out of the ground, or if you're scouting your fields after last year's harvest to get a look at residue cover, crop scouting is a vital part of any profitable farm operation. Before we get into today's topic, we wanted to let you know that as a token of our appreciation for the time you're spending with us on this webinar, Trimble would like to send you a free gift. These gifts are currently available only to those in North America and are limited to one per household. But if you have watched this on-demand webinar during the month of July 2018, we'll be sending you a gift. Watch for the email to hit your inbox a few hours after watching this for more information. Okay, let's get started. In this webinar, we're going to focus on three key reasons to scout. These are yield preservation, investment preservation, and sanity preservation. If this last one piques your curiosity, that's good. Uh, we'll be fleshing out each of these reasons in detail throughout the webinar. And finally, we'll have some very helpful information, including a great demo that will illustrate why your smartphone may be one of the most important tools in the crop scouting toolbox today. Now it's time to introduce you to our experts. First, Mike Delinsky is a leading entomologist who has over 30 years of expertise in entomology extension and integrated pest management. First as the provincial entomologist with the Alberta government, and then as an independent entomologist who runs a consulting company called Sticky Wisdom. Mike was a senior coach and pest management expert with the AgriTrend Network, and he has co-authored 10 scientific papers on integrated pest management. Next up, we have Kathleen McMillan, who is a technical trainer with Trimble Ag Software and an expert on the mobile app. Kathleen is going to walk us through a demonstration showing some of the great functionality right in the app that will make crop scouting simple and efficient. Okay, now let's get into it. A lot of people think crop scouting is about simply detecting disease in insects, but it's a lot more than that. Consider the multiple assessments you can gather during crop scouting. These include pre-seed burn down assessment, spring soil moisture measurement, plant stand establishment, in-season weed assessment, herbicide evaluation, tissue sampling, mid-season yield potential evaluation, late season fertility, and hail damage. So think of crop scouting as active observation of the crop when it's growing. Your goal is to understand what's affecting the crop and then use that information to make good decisions. Now I'm going to pass it over to Mike to discuss those three top reasons to scout. Thanks, Tracy. And I'd like to welcome all the farmers taking part in this webinar. Crop scouting has always been one of my passions. And that's because I've seen what a difference it can make. Let's start with yield preservation, which is probably the most important reason all farmers should be scouting their fields. Remember, a crop's yield potential is at its highest when the plant is still just a seed. From the moment after harvest, abiotic and biotic stresses, such as grain handling during harvest and storage, agronomic decisions and pests, can all take a bite out of the original yield potential of that seed. A farmer's role is to reduce stress to his crop, and the plants will do the rest. It's just like with humans. By managing stress in our lives, we're healthier and perform better. For plants, stress is caused by everything from weather to insects and diseases, which can cause nutrient shortages or imbalances. We scout so we can reduce some of those stressors during key points in the growing season. It's a proactive measure you can take to reduce losses and capture as much yield potential as possible. Many farmers believe that scouting begins at emergence, but it should actually start either in the fall to assess residue cover and to determine if any fall field prep work is needed, or in early spring to assess weeds, for example. In any case, as soon as your crop comes out of the ground, you want to keep an eye on it. It's important to remember that you want to supply nutrients to the plant before reproductive starts, because once pollinated, the plant shifts its focus to filling the head or pod. You want all the biomass and nutrients loaded into the plant before it pollinates. Right after pollination with wheat, there is one window left to apply extra nitrogen 
to drive up protein should there be a requirement for that. That window closes in a week to 10 days after pollination. There might also be an opportunity for late season disease control, but it depends on the crop. At emergence, you want to spot any seedling diseases. Maybe take a tissue test to verify any possible nutrient deficiencies you notice. Check for weed emergence, staging and types, and you can sweep to assess insects in the crop. Soil samples are an option if you see something that needs further investigation. You will also be watching for herbicide residue or carryover symptoms in the crop. This is becoming more complex as we grow different crops in our rotations. Also, keep in mind that it's more than just looking at leaves. You will want to carry a shovel so you can dig down and examine roots for signs of damage from insects, diseases, or toxic effects of fertilizers under certain conditions. It is also a time to dig deeper and assess whether compaction is an issue. Then you can make decisions about putting fungicides, insecticides, or maybe a foliar nutrient spray on, or go on vacation for a week and hope the plants grow out of the problem. The main question is, is there anything I should be doing? And if there is, does it make economic sense? When it comes to investment preservation, farmers hardly need to have this explained to them. Putting in a crop is expensive and you want every dollar to count. Scouting is a proactive measure that will enable you to protect your investment. The most important point to remember here is that when it comes to making better decisions in season to protect your investment, my advice is to rely on science and good data, not just your gut. Keeping reliable records is essential. You need to be able to go back and see what happened in previous years. For example, knowing which area of the field typically have salinity problems or where soil compaction might be a problem would be really useful. By having reliable records, you'll be doing a lot less guessing and your crop health will show it. This will also help in terms of knowing where to scout based on previous year's issues. The other reason it's important to track your data is that this is how you'll measure success. If at the end of the year you think, great, I had a 45 bushel yield, but you know you had the potential for more yield because you had more moisture and a better plant stand than you expected. Problem was you didn't take action in season and add the extra fertilizer you need to capture that extra yield. Pack that experience away for the next time you're in that situation. Economic thresholds are guides that help farmers make decisions during the crop season. There are thresholds for bugs, weeds, diseases, for each commodity and in each different geographic. Crop advisors and crop retailers are usually familiar with those thresholds and can help make decisions. An economic threshold related to a pest might be the density of a pest infestation at which a control treatment will provide an economic return. For insects, the economic threshold could be the population level of the insect or the extent of damage where the value of the crop destroyed exceeds the cost of controlling the pest. For some pests, it's numbers. For some pests, it's percent damage. A disease threshold might spell out action to take based on how much of the plant is affected or the risk given environmental conditions during a specific growth stage. If it's halfway up the plant, you may want to take action or not, depending on threshold information. In many cases, thresholds are not available and experience and advice reign. If you're on the fence, you may still want to get your sprayer ready and let your ag retailer know you might need a specific fungicide and how much. The decision on when to pull the trigger always turns out better when you're working with economic thresholds. Yes, gut instinct has a role, but the guides provided by local ag colleges and universities, governments, and other organizations can give you, the farmer, more confidence. Using scouting information and account thresholds will give you a better idea whether or not control is warranted. To take it one step further, if you know your estimated cost per unit production, you know whether extra insecticide, fungicide, or in-crop fertility applications will pay for themselves and fit into your budget. Sanity preservation is all about avoiding the should I, shouldn't I debate that goes on in every farmer's head, or the sadder question of should I have done X, Y, or Z to remedy the problem? If I did, would my yields have been higher? Having the right data to back your decision helps put those voices to rest. You've put a lot of money at risk, and if you miss your window of opportunity to spray for pests like Fusarium head blight, commonly called scab, or wheat midge, you can't go back and fix it. Let's consider sclerotinian canola as an example. 
Your neighbor is spraying. You're not. It's a big money decision. First, if you have a field history of sclerotinia, use the most tolerant variety. It's always a good idea to use the sclerotinia checklist. And finally, have a petal DNA test done to see if four levels are high enough to warrant a fungicide application. For crop advisors, there's usually a lot of pressure from clients to help with their fungicide decisions and many tools to help with that decision. In one case, I recall the field was scouted and then the farmer and his advisor carefully went through the sclerotinia checklist to increase their confidence with the diagnostic process, especially the part about looking for apothecia in last year's canola crop, not this year's. The sclerotes that overwintered are in last year's canola field. On top of that, the environmental conditions were considered and very few fields were sprayed. In those that were sprayed, the check strips only had a small yield response. The end result, the farmer saved 24 bucks an acre over several thousand acres. Fear of what happened in the past does not mean it will happen again, but the memories haunt you for a lifetime. Without scouting and good information, that won't go away. In an ideal world, regular passes across each of your fields would let you know how your crop is doing. However, none of us have time for this, but there are some great tools that can help. There are some low-tech shadows that you can throw on your field. Pheromone traps and yellow sticky traps are there doing that. There are high-tech shadows, airplanes, satellites, crop cams, various machinery, green seekers, and others like yield maps are tools casting shadows that often see things that average human eyes can't. The images they provide generally require ground truthing to unearth less than obvious solutions. To get as much out of the time invested in scouting, tracking of your scouting data will result in not only better decision making, but also a great deal of learning, which leads to even better decisions in the future. Good luck. Thanks, Mike. That's a strong case for crop scouting. I want to talk a bit about the importance of mobile here. Why should you make your phone a regular part of your daily farm labor management and crop scouting routine? Well, because it saves time and it makes life easier. The same reason, really, that we use our smartphones in so many other areas of our lives. From taking scouting notes and pictures to filing scouting reports, there are so many ways today that farmers can leverage their phones to improve crop scouting. This is an area Trimble Ag Software really wanted to help simplify for farmers. For example, the hail alerts tool in our mobile app, which comes free if you have ag premium weather, sends an alert right to the farmer's phone after a hailstorm. So the farmer knows exactly where to scout for crop damage to quickly be able to determine the next steps. Another great example of how farmers can use mobile to improve scouting is a new feature that's free with Farmer Pro called Crop Health Imagery. This satellite imagery can be viewed from Trimble's mobile app, so growers can easily navigate the troubled areas and enter scouting information such as pest types and photos right into their phones. Now I'm going to turn things over to Kathleen to take us through more of the ways that you can leverage your smartphone and Trimble Egg software to make crop scouting easier this year. planting or possibly harvesting, depending on where you are in the world and, and what you're growing. Um, scouting is an ongoing process uh, through the growing season. And at the end of the day, field scouting is really only as good as the accuracy of the information related to the location that you want to check. And if you've got good information on what you're looking for, whether it's pests or fungus or leaf damage, or even property issues like a broken fence or illegal dumping, you can save a lot of time and energy by applying your attention and, um, and focusing on exceptions. It's a great streamlining tool for businesses, including our farmers. So from the mobile app, if I were in my truck, for example, and I'm driving by my field and I saw that uh, there's a whole section of the crop that is showing um, maybe some signs of fungus and I want my, my advisor to go and have a closer look at the entire crop. I just grab my phone. I don't need to be on seller Wi-Fi connection at this point. And I tap on fields, find the location for my field. And from the field details screen, I wanna tap on field scout, which is yellow in the middle row. And I can see I've got a couple more records there and I can 
tap on one of those to open them up and have a look at them. That one doesn't have a lot of information, it was just a test, but I'll show you how you make a new one. And you don't have to fill out the entire Crop Scout report to share this with your advisor. You could get it started with some basic preliminary information including a photo of what you're looking at as well as the GPS coordinates for where you want them to go. Um, this is pretty helpful because we've been talking with growers and there was one story of a fellow who was working with his advisor and he was sharing photos and he was telling him to go to a certain location in the field but the results he was getting back on the scouting reports weren't lining up with what he was seeing, the farmer. So it turned out that they were both looking at the same thing but in slightly different locations. So uh, what you want to do is just uh, get the report started and you can throw in a couple of mandatory fields by selecting the crop stage and selecting the crop condition. And then just scroll down or scroll up <laughs> and tap on photos. And from here, in my truck, I can take a picture of the pest and select use photo and cancel out of that, go back and you can see that the image is there and you can continue taking as many photos as you want. As well, you can throw some comments in, into the box below and it could be, you know, Tom, go have a look for this pest as shown in the photo above uh, at the location pinned below. So if I pull the, the screen up, drag it up with my finger, I can see a satellite view of this imaginary field is actually over a suburb of houses. <laughs> it was just a test account. And on the boundary, if, if I tap the plus sign, it's going to let me plant a flag. So I'm just going to call this mouse and I maybe want to change the color to look like a mouse and last I want to kind of get the specific location really good so I'm just moving the screen under my finger so that the X moves around find the right location the latitude and longitude uh, measurements automatically adjust and then I hit the check mark and it saves it so anytime I'm looking at the field boundary for this field I'm going to see that gray pin and it's showing what it is and how far away I am from it. If I was actually physically in that location and I'm driving towards it, I can tap on the compass icon, the little white box on the top left corner of the map, and it will show where I am relative to that pin. So the trick here is to tap the disk icon now to save this information. The disk icon is on the top right corner. And then I wanna go back and just do a quick sync so I'm, I've driven back to the farm, I'm within Wi-Fi range or cell range. Just run back into that record. Oh, I think it was this one. Go back to the reports, tap into the one that I was just using. And at the top right corner of the screen, I've got a message icon with a pencil. And it's going to load a report with all of this information, including the GPS coordinates and I can email it to anybody. They can view this information without even having access to my account, and they can complete the field scouting report and share the information back with me so that I can complete it online or, or on my app, or if they have access to the account, they can just do it right inside the account. Great, thank you, Kathleen. And that's the conclusion of our July webinar. Thanks to all of you for attending today. We know how busy things can get this time of year, and we appreciate you spending some of that time with us. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out by email or by phone. The contact information is on the screen. Also, make sure to come back in August when we'll be launching a new webinar topic, which we will announce in the coming week here on our website, in our newsletters, and through social media. Thanks again, and see you back here in August.